Hello, this is Reza Red from Redacad, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a data flow, Power BI data flow in the website, and what are tips to enable it, and an example of a data flow created. Let's check it out. In another video, I explained what is Power BI data flow, what are use cases of that, uh, and how you can uh, use it in your Power BI implementation. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can create it. First thing uh, you need to know is that Power BI data flow is not a desktop feature. You cannot create it in Power BI desktop. You have to create it in the website and it's not a feature in Power BI report server yet. So it is only available in the Power BI website, only in the Power BI service. Uh, how you can use it? Um, you need to be in an organizational workspace. Um, you see I'm already in a workspace. This is an organizational workspace. Um, there are two types of workspaces available. Um, if you have created your workspace long time ago, it might be workspace version one. Uh, this workspace that I'm in right now is workspace version two. Um, one of the ways to realize that this is a workspace version two is that when I go at the top of the workspace, I see all these options, create settings, access. Uh, but if I compare it with a workspace version one, this is a workspace version one option. You see, I don't have the access button, for example. There are lots of differences between these two types of workspaces. If you create your workspace um, these days, it will be created as workspace version two anyways. Um, you can also use data flows with workspace version one, but uh, there are uh, some limitations in the type of work data flow you can create. So uh, start with the workspace version two. Uh, then you can click on create and then data flow. So under create data flow. However, um, some of you might not have the option to do that because admin of a Power BI tenant, uh, the Power BI tenant admin can enable or disable this feature. Uh, just to uh, show you where it is as a admin, I can go to the setting admin portal um, and under tenant settings, there is a configuration for data flow, um, data flow settings. So the tenant admin can disable or enable this configuration, right? If it is enabled, if you have uh, a workspace version two, and if you created that workspace version two, then everything should be fine and you should be able to uh, to go and build the data flow. So now let's go and create a data flow. I go and create data flow. Data flow is like Power Query Online. And there are different ways that you can create data flow. Uh, the term of entity in data flow is referring to a table. In Power Query, in Power BI Desktop, we call it tables or queries here, we call it entities. So let's start with adding new entity. There are other ways as well, which I'll explain in other videos. So add a new entity. Um, and let's say I want to get data from different sources. As you see, this is similar to Power Query on Power Query, but the difference is that this is Power Query Online. I have all of these data sources. Some of them are not available here, but that doesn't mean that that data source is not available. Um, the graphical interface might not have it. Most of these are available through a script anyway. Now let's say I'm going to use a, a file in my SharePoint folder just to show you where it is. So I have a Radicat SharePoint site, which I have an Excel file in here. And uh, that is AdventureWorks Excel file, which I'm going to get it from that data flow. So what I'll do is I'll say, give me the SharePoint folder. I put the SharePoint folder URL here, or better to just copy it directly over there. Okay. Now um, I can sign in. Now this is not just for SharePoint. You can use it for SQL Server. You can use it for many other um, sources. Some of these data sources, however, if they are located on-prem or in a local network, you might need to set up on-premises data gateway for that. Um, in Power BI desktop, you don't usually need to do that until you publish it to the service. But because this time we are working directly on the service, 
um, if it is an on-prem data source, you need to use that uh, at the beginning. Uh, this is a SharePoint folder on SharePoint Online, so I don't need on-prem gateway. So I just set up my account and then click on next. Uh, then I can go and look at all files within my SharePoint folder. In this case, I'm looking at the entire uh, SharePoint, uh, let's say, folder, the entire folder of Radicat SharePoint folder. And under that, I'll see all files existing in my uh, SharePoint. Now, using Power Query Online can be a little bit slower than normal Power Query because every time it does validation and things like that. So these are all files that I have. And I can go and search for that file. Let's say I want only Excel file using their extension. Um, these are Power Query features that I'm using right now in the um, Power BI uh, website. And this is the AdventureWorks file. Um, I can click on the binary, which is where the actual content of the file is. Power Query automatically understand this binary file is an Excel file. It converted to Excel. You can see also part of the formula at the top, uh, which is converting that to Excel. And as I mentioned, it takes a little bit of time when you are in this environment in the website. Then let's say, for example, from product table, I go ahead and click on table. Then it will come uh, with the details of product table. Um, every time this validation occurs on every step. And now I have the details of product table. Let's say I select a few of these columns, the product key, the English product name, the color, or any other columns if I do need that. And let's say in this case, that's enough. And then I say remove other columns. So similar to Power Query, as you can see. And now I can go ahead and call this table product table. There is nothing stopping you from adding more tables in one uh, data flow. So this is product table. I can go ahead and duplicate this, which means I'm getting data from the same source. But this time, instead of uh, doing all the navigation, so I delete all of those steps until end. Uh, this time I'm getting a different table. Let's say, for example, this time I'm getting customer table. And from the customer table, I can also select those columns that I do need. At the top of this uh, section, you see that uh, there are some options coming in the in this environment, which is similar to Power Query in Power BI Desktop. So let's say for a customer, I get the customer key, their first name, middle name, last name, and birth date, and remove other columns. And I'm going to call this one customer. So you can create as many as uh, tables you want. They can come from different sources. You can go through get data and get it again. Uh, there are lots of transformations at the top, but transformations are not limited to this list. Uh, you can do even more. Some of these transformations might be only premium only feature like AI Insight. Now, um, after creating all of these, I can save and close. Um, after validation, it come up with a menu option that I can say um, what is uh, the name of this data flow. Every da uh, data flow can have different names. On, under each workspace, you can have multiple data flows. In Under each data flow, you can have multiple entities. You can consider it like a database, and under each database, you have multiple tables. Uh, and these are all behind the scenes is stored in Azure Data Lake. So let me call this sample, not sample data flow, adventure works data flow. You can put some descriptions if you like, that's saved. Now, after doing this, uh, this is a data flow, including these two tables, which I can schedule it to refresh or I can directly refresh it now. Uh, let's say I close this. And under data flows, I see only one data flow and I can refresh it now. In usual practice, you schedule it to refresh, but for now, I just refresh it now and it would take some time to refresh it from my uh, SharePoint Online 
website. So here it is. This is how you go and create a data flow um, created in uh, Workspace version 2. Um, usually you put it under an organizational workspace and then later on you can use this um, this data flow or tables entities created in this data flow in a Power BI desktop uh, report which I'm going to show you later on how this can be used. Um, this is mainly the creation of data flow that you have seen. Uh, I'll wait a little bit for this to uh, finish the refresh and then you can see that the last refresh time is set up. There is at the moment no place here that you can go and see the content of the tables until uh, unless the the Power Query Online which shows you a preview of the record. Uh, another place is to go in Power BI Desktop and get data from this to see the content of that. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You see that this is already refreshed um, and we do weekly videos on Power BI and AI.